Hi there, I'm Artist Rob Reap and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If it's your first time here, I want to invite you to hit that big subscribe button below the video and also hit that bell icon. That just makes sure that you get notified anytime I upload new content. I'm uploading every week brand new oil painting content here on this channel. All right, it's important for us as painters as we get into the content of today's video, it's important for us as painters to get out of the box that we're normally in, get out of our comfort zone. Now, if you've been with me for a while, you know I am a landscape and wildlife painter at heart. I love, love, love landscapes. But today, I kind of challenged myself, decided to go after uh, a still life. And this was a big, big challenge for me. I wanted to do it all in one setting. That was going to be a, a challenge in itself. But this is what I came up with. And you're going to get to see from start to finish how this worked out. Just go ahead and get your paint started. We're starting off, if you're painting with me, we're using an oil primed linen canvas panel. You do need to go ahead and pre-tone it uh, with some sort of earthy wash, whether it be burnt sienna or something of that nature. But we're painting a glass of water and an orange here on Rob Reap Art. Here's our painting subject for the day. I've just filled up a, a plain glass of water from my kitchen, grabbed, a, actually this is a, actually a cutie brand orange, or I guess a mandarin orange, but um, I'm that's what I've got set up. It's what I had in my house. You can actually take anything if you guys want to do your own still life and take just about anything and set up a still life. It's it's uh, just, just make sure you, you try to compose it just like you would anything else, uh, even like you would a landscape. Uh, again, this is this is kind of a new thing for me. I, I haven't done a lot of uh, still lifes in the past. Um, years, years ago, I worked in a few of them and uh, really didn't have a lot of success as a young painter with still life. So this is this is going to be a challenge. I'm going to try to incorporate some of my landscape principles and uh, just a few of my rules that I've kind of imposed upon myself that that I find help me paint landscapes. And we'll see how this works out. So you guys just bear with me through this painting. First thing I'm doing that's very different. I am gonna I am gonna sketch this out. I'm just using a dark, um, very very thin layer of paint to just sketch this out with the number three. Just getting a rough rough outline of how this thing's gonna set up. Painting in the shadow right now or sketching in the shadow. You could use charcoal for the sketch. Um, I uh, I like using charcoal a lot, but. Um, this is going to be one that I'm going to do in one setting. I'm not going to have a lot of impasto, a lot of thick paint on this. So I don't want to have to rub off any charcoal later. Rubbing charcoal off of acrylics is is very simple. When you do it with oils, it's it can be a different story. I got the orange a little too small. I want to make it a little bit larger. You guys could see me. I was actually using a landscape um, uh, viewfinder to get this thing set up. I'm on an 8x10 canvas. You can see I've just got my my still life set up over to the right of me and I'll try to give you guys some some views of that uh, throughout this this painting I'm just getting the basic shapes in to start with I do want to mention that I'm not going to narrate this entire video the way I do a lot of others um, I, I want you guys to, to be able to just watch the strokes and really get in tune with 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 how that works without hearing me speak. So what I'm going to do is if if you would like to um, if you would like to skip forward at times if, if if things look a little simple feel free to do so. But I did want to go ahead and upload uh, the full the full painting process just so that anybody who was a beginner could follow along with every single stroke. I've got a tapered water glass. This is just a, a, a plain, very very cheap, inexpensive glass that uh, was given to me uh, as a home warming gift uh, when I first when I was back in my single days uh, and just filled it up with uh, no ice just just filled it up with just plain tap water I thought this would be a nice challenge for me to, to not only paint an orange which has this this beautiful vibrant color but with this navy background that I've got I wanted to try to paint something that that would be difficult for me. Uh, again, always challenging myself, always trying to make make things a little bit more difficult because that's how we get better. Uh, and this this water glass is going to have a transparency about it that I've got to be cognizant of, and it's it's going to be a job to try to portray uh, on the on the 
canvas on this panel that this glass has something in it. You know, that's going to be the difficult task is actually showing that there's water in, in the glass. It's one thing to paint the glass. It's another thing to have something in the glass that's in itself is clear, water. The other thing that's diff going to be difficult for some of you, I've noticed, you know, I think sometimes we have this tendency to just paint a solid background for a still life, especially with cloth. Really try to set this up with a strong, strong light source directly on the, the orange uh, and you can play around with the direction that this comes from. You obviously guys can, can kind of tell where, I'm, where I've got my light set up. But one of the things I was cognizant of during this process of setting, setting it up, I wanted a lot of shadow. I'm going to do my best to make this, this painting about 80% shadow, about 20% light, uh, and get that checkerboard effect. You know, we want that, we want that, we want lots of, lots of dark so that the, the, so that the highlight on the orange and the highlights on the water will really just pop. Uh, so that's what I'm after. I also want to make a note before we get too far into this painting that, uh, again, I'm using a pretty extreme minimalist color palette. I don't even have an orange. I'm only using red and, and yellow. I'm using cad red deep and cad yellow deep for this painting. Uh, and if you're asking, well, why are we making it that hard on ourselves? Why don't we just use orange? Well, the honest truth is when I set down the tube of orange that I had, uh, I tend to, you know, I buy expensive, relatively expensive paints. I like gambling. Gambling's my, my preferred brand. Uh, and there, you know, you may have whatever you have at home's fine. It's, you can paint with whatever you would like. Uh, gambling just happens to be what I use, but, uh, I do most of my orders online because I live in a pretty rural area and I don't have access to a, a store that sells gambling paints within 50 to 100 miles of me. Um, and so what that means is I have to buy a lot of stuff online. Well, I sat down and I had made the, you know, the idiot, idiotic mistake of, of, of running out of orange before, um, before I could actually, uh, you know, catch it and, and, and give that order. So I sat down tonight to paint this thing, had it all set up and, you know, no orange, but Hey, if you're, you know, if you're, if you're used to blending and, and, and developing your own colors with a minimal palette and minimal color palette, that's no problem. Cad red deep, cad yellow deep. They both are going to do just fine. We're going to get a beautiful orange. It's probably actually going to work out better because we're not going to be reliant on that. We're going to really focus in on mixing those. So I challenge you, you know, if you have orange, that's fine. Use that. But if not, uh, even, even if you have orange, you know, give yourself a challenge and try to, try to make this, uh, you know, make this thing work for you with just yellow and red. All right. Uh, drop colors. I'm dropping in now. I'm just, I've gone in and I've tried to find some of the deepest Navy that's coming through. Now I'm using a mix of ultramarine blue, a mix of Prussian blue. I'm being very careful with the Prussian blue. Um, also using Van Dyke Brown within this just to gray it some, uh, and then I'm also throwing in a little dioxazine purple in some areas. And you just, again, I'm never going to give you guys direct recipes uh, in terms of how much. I want you to play with that. I want you at home when you're painting to to develop your own strategies for color mixing because I only know what works for me. And I, I, I I've been to other classes before. Yes, I have attended a few few classes uh, in in my early days and you know there would be teachers who would say you need to get a color wheel you need to get you a color wheel well I never did I never did want to spend the money for one it just it looked like a weird looking gadget that I didn't need and so I've just developed these the ability to to mix colors on the go and I, I don't worry about um you know, the recipes that, that everybody would talk about. Most people would not think about putting Van Dyke Brown in a blue. I do it because it, you know, it creates a darker, grayer tone. It, it mutes it, and I like that. Um, if you've painted with me on my landscapes before, you'll know that I use Van Dyke Brown in, in skies sometimes. I use them in clouds. I use them all over the place. But that's just because that's what I've developed. I'm not demanding that you do it. I'm just telling you what I do, and if you'd like to try it, give it a shot. But develop your own strategies and don't become too reliant on on the rules and gadgets and all this stuff. Just just you know get a minimal palette. If you want one, if you want more colors, you know that's fine. Go out and buy them. But uh, for me, I like to just go with it. So I'm just I'm kind of doing what I do for my normal landscapes at the moment. I'm just squinting my eyes 
uh, just a little, you know, and I'm not even having to squint them all the time, but I'm just trying to pick out the little pockets of color that are similar to this, this deep blue that I've got going. I started behind the, the glass because a lot of that navy is showing through. It's a lot of clear water in this glass. Now it's time to start working on the cloth that I've got that's the background. If you're wondering how I set this up, since I'm not exactly a still life fanatic, I don't have a lot of still life props that I can use, um, I actually grabbed just a table easel and set it on a plastic tub and then draped the cloth uh, you know, on top of the, the top of the table easel and then drifted it down onto the, and used the, 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 bo the top of the plastic tub as the, the table or the base for this still life. Uh, painting cloth is something that I, I'm still learning a lot about, so I don't want I don't want anyone to think that I'm an expert on this. I'm not. Uh, I just I've done some portraits in the past with solid colors. I'm probably if I'm totally honest with you all, which I always want to be. I'm if it if you were to throw a pattern on this, I might have a little bit of trouble. Um, I think I could do it, but I might have a little bit of trouble. But for solid patterns, what I like to do. I paint in the colors first, and then I go back with a big blending brush and just drag them out to create those smooth features that we get within cloth. Uh, and and you'll, you guys will see what I'm talking about uh, soon enough. But I'm just staying, sticking with my dark colors at the moment. I'm using a number three bristle brush, just laying these in. This is all still just, just big, broad strokes, just getting colors in, not overworking them. Going back to the palette occasionally. All right, throughout painting the rest of this cloth, we want to just... You know, notice slight little color shifts. We've got a really dark area uh, here near this uh, top portion that kind of cuts down. There's a really strong light source and a wrinkle in the cloth that's going to create a, 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 a bit of a highlight to the left of this area. And we've got deep shadow in this little cove. Uh, so we just we're trying to pay attention to every little crease that's that's in the uh, in the cloth itself. Now you have to you have to be careful about breaking it down too detailed. Right now we're just, for, especially for an 8x10, you're just wanting to get the, the idea of it. Uh, you don't want to get too too fancy with this. And and really the larger the canvas, the the principle remains the same because you're, you're still going to be painting. If you were doing a, a, a painting that was, um, a, let's just take a landscape for instance that was, you know, a 48x60, the detail is still going to be at this scale, when you're talking, if you take an eight by ten section of that, the detail is going to be similar to what we're doing here. It's when you step back with a large canvas that you go, "Oh, that looks really detailed," because you've got all these little pockets of detail, uh, these little those little eight by ten spots. I hope that makes sense. I know that can be a little bit confusing. I'll try to. I've got an eight, a, a big, a very large canvas. I'm planning on working on soon for another video. So be on the lookout for that, and we'll talk more more about uh, painting in large scale because it's it's not. It doesn't change a lot. You're just you got to be cognizant of the areas that you're. You got to make sure you don't you don't go too big with too big of a brush or too small with too small of a brush. You have to just keep painting the, the natural way and. And it, and, it, and it works out when you step back. And right now, this painting, again, I talk about this all the time to my students, you guys here on YouTube that are, that are watching me. At this point, you're probably going to want to throw this thing in the trash because it just, it's so rough. I think it's not far away, though. We're, 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 we're on a good path, and we get, we're starting to need to pay attention to lots of little crinkles, little wrinkles in the in the cloth down here near this this glass. You notice I'm putting my hand on with smaller canvases. I paint, I still paint on my large H frame easel uh, in my studio, so I kind of I don't have a top support anything that holds them in. Uh, it's just something I've kind of become accustomed to. And with this size canvas, one brush stroke can really move a panel pretty easily, so you have to be able to hold on to it or have something that does hold it. All these little areas down here are going to look like wrinkles soon enough. Now we're making a, 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 a color switch to a slightly lighter tone, so we're going to add some uh, titanium white and start to bring in some lighter tones. So just, just watch as, uh, as this happens over the next few strokes. 
We're going to do this all over this panel. We're going to watch for the new pockets of this, this secondary lighter area. And then we're just going to paint it in. Now, your brush stroke uh, direction will be extremely important for painting the cloth. You do not want, if, if you've got cloth cascading downwards, you don't want to paint it across. All right, see how, see how that pocket of light, we've got two pockets of light now. Now, let's go ahead and lay in. We've got a, a shadow behind this, this orange. And we're actually going to have two different shades of color for this, this, sh this shading of the orange. But we're just going to go ahead and lay this one in first. Now, we've got a little crinkle on the shadow. So it's not that the orange is not round. It's not that the orange is not, it, which it's, it is kind of an irregular shaped orange. It's not perfectly uh, spherical in shape. But the shadow with the cloth kind of curling uh, near the middle portion of the bottom of that shadow, um, just to the left of where my brush is right there, um, that's that little bit of a almost a little hill in the shadow is caused by the by the cloth and so we'll deal with that but it's it's that's the way it looks once again you can tell I do a lot of mixing just trying to get colors correct color selection is so so important when we do this, I'm sticking with the navy so far. Everything we've done has been in a, in a navy tone of some sort. Using a lot of ultramarine blue, Prussian blue, Van Dyke brown. I'm adding some dioxazine purple. You you guys can probably see a little bit of that purple shining through. I do want to apologize about something as we kind of move forward here. I did I painted this at night, and that was because I wanted. I've got a lot of windows in my studio and. I wanted it to be very dark so I could get a very pronounced shadow area on the still life itself. And my lighting source is strong. I had a spotlight on it, or actually a couple of spotlights down on the piece itself, a uh, spotlight lamp. But I did have to turn the lights off, the upper lights off in my studio. Uh, and I couldn't light my canvas as well so you guys are probably getting a little bit of noise in the dark areas of this it may not be as clear a video as what you're used to so I do apologize for that uh, I will try to get a better a better setup for this in the future but uh, it just had to be this way to give me a really good look um, at the uh, at the the still life that I had set up for the most part the cloth is in other than the highlights and we haven't blended it yet so the cloth is not finished Please don't think it's done yet. We're going to start on the orange. And I'm going with my lightest tone. I've got, uh, there's a shadow. The, the glass is causing a shadow across the middle portion, uh, top part of the orange itself. So I've got to get the light part in on this orange here right now on the top, which I'm going to do now. And I'm going to be very careful. I want to slightly blend the edges of this orange. I don't want this thing perfectly uh, hard lined around it. Uh, that's going to help me out a little bit. It's just, and, and you know, there are people who would paint this with a very hard line. I'm simply not one of those those type painters. I like to have a little bit of a blended edge, a little bit of a, a soft edge, and that creates that that idea of 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 what I call uh, impressionistic realism. We're we're using those broad strokes. We're not keeping things ultra realistic, but we are we are painting a realism painting. Now, if you're using the red and white, the cad red deep and the cad yellow deep like I am, uh, this is it's going to be difficult to get your orange mixed up properly. Just keep at it, you know, spend plenty of time getting it mixed up and it, it'll eventually work. So I'm skipping down below that shadow at this point and just starting to uh, to work on the highlighted part of the orange. Of course, the bottom side of it, the back left side is going to be very uh, very dark com in com comparison to this color that I've got and that's what's going to create the the illusion of depth within this painting and this orange is going to look flat for a lot of the period that we paint on it until we put the final highlights on and touch it up uh, in terms of its its small details it's going to look pretty flat. 
uh, just hang in there with it. Don't get frustrated with it. You'll eventually get there. Just keep working on it till it, till it happens. Okay, I've darkened the color. It's time to start working on the back side of the orange and the shadow top. I'm not blending these edges yet. But I do want you to notice I am painting, I'm not just doing little X strokes, random strokes to paint this in. I am trying to follow generally the contours of this round shape that the orange has. The brush strokes are going to play a very important part of the, the, the feel of the shape. Uh, so we really need to pay attention to that. We need to be careful with it and not get too carried away with just slopping on paint. At this point, it will. It, this does matter. Now, if you wanted to add some interest into this painting a little bit more, I tried. I wanted this to be a very minimalist painting. You could take a lime wedge, or you know, you could throw in some lettuce, or I, I don't know, anything you want, and and put it in this painting. Just set it up where it looks pretty. Get some different colors, and this painting would be totally different. But just hang in there with it. Again, that glass is, is, is casting a shadow, and that's what's happening. The back side of this, of this orange is just simply the shadow from the light being on the right side of it. Uh, had we taken away the glass, we would have had a lot more sh light on, on the orange itself. Instead, we've got this really nice little composition of this dark light, dark light pattern on the orange, and I really like it. I think it's going to, I think it's going to help this thing in the end. All right, I wanted to go back and work some more on the glass, start to really get the underpainting finished. So all I'm doing is now, once again, I'm not trying to paint it as though I think it should look. I'm trying to directly use my eyes. This sounds so simple, but it's, we don't do it as artists, especially as beginners, very, very well. I'm trying to look at the object and paint it as though it appears to my eyes. Again, not how I think it should look. I'm not using the principle of looking at a cloud and saying it's white. I'm looking at a cloud and saying it's, it's got yellows and blues and, and oranges in it. And even some browns. That's what I'm doing. And I'm not, I don't mean that literally in that we're painting a cloud. You guys hang with me on this. What I'm saying is paint this glass, paint everything in this painting as though it actually appears. Which means you're going to have to think about it some. You're going to have to be patient with it. You're going to have to try to decipher what your eyes are actually seeing and then transfer that into this, this illusion that, that we're trying to create on the canvas. So you're just going to paint all these little lighter pockets, anything that's going on, and my camera's adjusting there for some reason for light. I'm so sorry about that, but just keep your eye on the different shapes, different colors that are happening within this glass. And that's that in the end is going to create all these little different abstract shapes that are going to, when you step back, turn, turn it into something really special. As we've done a little bit of work inside the glass, it's time to start defining the top, uh, which is really going to set this thing apart and give it again a lot of depth. There's going to be multiple colors in the lip of the glass itself. I'm just taking, uh, uh, this is the same blue. I'm generally using the same blues throughout the entire painting. All I'm doing is I'm using titanium white to change the value the, of the tone itself. And that creates harmony within the piece. See, if you, if you, that's one of the huge benefits to using a minimal color palette. You end up with this very harmonious look about every painting you do. And I'm not advocating to not go out and buy the colors that you need. If you, you know, if you need, um, I'm trying to think of a color I don't use very often. Uh, if you need a turquoise, go get a turquoise. If it calls for it and you really need it, then get it. But you don't always need that. Sometimes you're kind of fooling yourself into thinking, well, I need to buy everything in, in the catalog because, you know, <laughs> it's there. Uh, no, you, you've got, you've got. If you, sometimes if you limit yourself with your options, you end up with a more harmonious painting. Uh, it's very much like music. Harmony is everything. You know, you have to, every, all the notes have to work together. And paint, painting is no different, no different at all. You, you, these, these, these elements and colors and tones have to work together. Uh, you cannot fathom how bad a painting can get 
you know, if you're if you're if you're taking the shortcut on colors. With the underpainting complete, I've moved to a liner brush. Uh, this is my synthetic liner that I've told you about. It's a Raphael Precision liner. Uh, and I love this brush. It is so versatile. And that's that's it keeps the shape wonderfully, which is one of the things I love about it. But with this brush, we're just going to start start trying to define the, the, the details uh, in the glass. The glass has a good shape, the underpainting's finished, the orange is un underpainting is finished, but now it's time to start turning it into a into a a legible, uh, two legible objects within the painting. Don't overcomplicate this though. Do not overcomplicate it. Uh, there's a highlight back here. We're going to kind of lay that in. We're again, we're saving our brightest whites, our brightest highlights for the end, and that's so important. Please don't go and just start throwing in your whites right now. Uh, and again, we we won't use pure white even when we do, but we're just trying to create the illusion that the water is is in, within this glass. There's going to be little little details that 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 force that to happen that give us that that illusion. The glass that I've got, the bottom of it is is what really gives it its character. So I need to really get these uh, this this almost pentagon shape or or whatever shape it is that we've got going. We need to get that outlined well. So I'm just slightly changing colors here there, brightening it up just a little bit. And then I'm taking some darker colors and laying those in to create that 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 dimension, that prism of color within the, the bottom of the glass. And this is not a, I cannot stress enough, if you're using your own glass at home and not painting directly from what I've got, you need to look at your glass and see how it looks because it, it's going to be it's going to be slightly different and your your lighting is going to change it every every little move you make of the 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 fabric and the direction of the light source is going to alter how this glass is going to appear so don't just take don't just take what I'm doing here as as you know the the perfect word it's not you need to pay attention to uh, the exact shapes that are in your your painting. Now I've got a little bit of a shadow underneath the glass. I did I did want to go ahead and get that in, just strengthen that up. That pr creates that little bit of sense sense of depth once again that the glass is just barely sitting on top, uh, and and there's a little bit of shadow cast just underneath the edge. I really like how that looked. Okay, time to start painting in the highlights of the cloth, and I'm going to take a bright color. And anywhere I see a really strong highlight or a curve in the in the cloth where the light's hitting it, I'm just going to paint in with my liner brush a line, and I'm going to you know just keep the shape of the cloth wherever it may be. Now I started off with a badger, a small number three badger blender, and it didn't really turn out well. I haven't had a lot of luck with this brush for some reason lately. I don't know if I'm just kind of off my game with it or not, but I have a larger badger brush that I really like, so I'm going to just repaint this line in. And I'm going to do this throughout the entire the entire uh, area of the of the cloth, the entire part of this painting. Anywhere I see a highlight, I paint a line in, then take my large badger brush and pull it out, staying along the same curved line. And just kind of watch how this works. It may take a couple of strokes to really get it working. But you just kind of pull that color out. And you can go you can go as hard or soft with it as you want to. That just creates the highlight within the cloth. I'll put a line here. I've got another highlight laying in this area. It comes in. It's short, so a little crease. Be careful not to get too much into your dark, and just blend that out. And that just kind of softens that line. Another one. This one curls out. Laying it almost on the edge. Going over this one several times because it's a little lighter. And just pull it out. And that, that's creating a nice little cloth sh wrinkle shape. Another one right at the edge of this orange. Go ahead and lay a few of these in. Just get them going. Take the badger brush. This is again a 
Badger Blender is what I'm using. Careful not to get into your orange. Pull that out. And that creates a little bit. See, I didn't define that one as much as I did the front ones because it's still in shadow. You can just keep doing that until you get it to the to the desired almost opacity that you that you're looking for. I got a little bit outside of the line on the glass to the right, so I'm just going to go ahead and kind of fix that and get this glass more perpendicular. Take that little curve out of it. It's a straight straight shot down from the top of the glass, so just need to get that painted back in. Yeah, there we go. That looks better. Perfect. We continue with that same color with a thinned out liner. And we've got to paint these little creases down at the bottom that create this, this pattern, uh, the shape of the glass. And we're going to be very light with this. We don't want to get too crazy. If you get too, too, too heavy with this liner brush at this point, you're going to create a problem. So we're just pulling in those lines and that's going to create a little bit more depth and more shape to this glass. And once again now just kind of looking for any pockets of light, any changes of color. Sorry for the, the bright change in the, the shot that I've got, but uh, I didn't notice this until after I recorded it, but it, you can still see what's going on. Time to paint the stem in of the orange, which is going to be a pretty simple, just two-tone. It's going to have a, a dark side and then the shadow side, so I paint the dark in first, just get that in, and then I'll go back in. I'm going to add some sap green. This is really the only area that, that the sap green really comes into play is right now is with this, uh, with this stem. Let me drop in the light side with that little bit of sap green in it. Not heavy on the sap green. We've got a lot more work to go on this orange though. We're not done with it. We're going to go back in with a slightly darker shadow color and we're going to start to paint the contours, the little pockets where the, where the orange starts to come together with the stem. And you're going to use a combination of the dark and light colors. We're, that's just going to create uh, even more depth, even more shape within the orange itself. We're using our liner brush, sticking with that, keeping our, our paint fairly thin so it'll lay on top easily. And this is, this is the refining detail stage of this orange. We want to, we want to start to really bring it together. We want, we want to start to get it to where it, it looks like an orange. Right? So far it's been just this flat object with a couple of different tones. You can see even I was a little bit tentative because this is such an important stage. If this doesn't come off, if I'm not able to execute this properly, the painting's just really a lost cause. But just keep working with it. Even if it even if it's not right the first time, you can always go back over it. Don't don't fret about it too much. So I changed colors just slightly. Going back to that highlight. Still not as bright as what I had on the actual highlight part of the orange, but this is this is a little bit of a highlight within the shadow side. And we're just pulling in towards the stem. We're just trying to look for the little pockets of color. Look for them. Just really look for them. We're going to go back and start touching up the glass a little bit. And we've got a reflection of this orange. The glass is almost acting as a, a weak mirror, and we're getting this orange reflection, this round orange, almost uh, conical shape uh, on, on the glass itself. Might as well just paint that in. It's going to make it look even more realistic. So we drop that in. That looks pretty good. We can slightly change the colors wherever we need to just to get this thing working. Go back to our palette. We're going to take a touch of our orange and mix it with a lot of titanium white with our liner brush. And it's time to put the highlight on this orange. So we just look at it. Look at your orange. See where the highlight is. It's not going to take over the entire, the entire orange. And you don't want to just paint on a big glob. You want to try to place it because the orange, the orange has texture to it. And that creates little pockets of shadow. 
So I'm just kind of dragging this out from the center point, dabbling it in, pulling out this highlight. And that already looks amazing. Really like how that's turning out. Then we go back and we'll do a little bit of blending work, blending that texture of this orange in. Because we had those really strong lines on it, which are which are okay for shadows, but we do want to blend they still are going to have soft edges because of the texture of the orange. I'm really enjoying this painting now. It's really starting to come together. We've got a little bit more work to do on it, but I'm going to refine the I didn't get the the shadow shape totally correct when I first started so I'm gonna touch that up a bit take a look at that orange and see where there needs to be any more light or any more color shifts now is the time to do it I see a little bit more light underneath the stem a little bit of a bright spot and that's gonna add a lot just that little touch of color there it's so easy to just say well it's orange let's paint just just a blob of orange and then put a shadow on it that that's not going to cut it. It's not going to make it look realistic. And and again, I'm not trying to paint this in ultra realism. So for any of you out there who are ultra realism painters, that's not what I'm doing here. I'm trying to to do this with with minimal strokes, broad strokes, and just trying to get the idea in. Now I've taken a little bit of bright white with just a touch of orange, and I've touched a little bit more into that highlight. That's creating even more of that light source, really hammering down onto the to the orange. It's starting to look like something. A little bit more color, just layering it. And it's that layering of color which is going to create that super bright, bright look. And you can tell now because we would because we use the such dark such a dark color for our our background and we and we checkered it correctly, uh, what we are getting now is this really intense illusion of light coming from the orange and we need the same thing on the glass so we're going to take this white with a little bit of blue and we're going to start to highlight the glass you don't have to be perfect with it just get it on there I happened to catch that there was a little bit of another another source of light on this orange just beyond the shadow so I'm going to paint that in I'm not going to get it as intense as as intense as I got the original little little dot of light, but there's a light source on the back side. It's just catching that that little shimmer from the glass, and then right on the edge there, we're getting a little bit more of that texture. I'm just going back and refining this just a little bit more, blurring those lines just slightly, blending them a little bit. Look at that. Look at how much more realistic that's that's starting to look. working on the contours of the orange painting around it now pulling it through pulling it out into that blue that's gonna if we pull it out into the blue you're going to create this deep shadow underneath and I'm really gonna like how that looks yeah look at that I really like that we're gonna create even more depth with a darker shadow underneath the orange and we've also got a deeper shadow just between the orange and the glass, and that needs to get in at this point. It's going to take a lot of doxazine purple, Van Dyke brown, ultramarine blue, Prussian blue, big mix of all of them, and just get, get a dark, dark mixture, almost black. And then we're going to take our badger brush and just slightly blend this. Slightly, yeah. See, I didn't even do it too harsh. Back in with your number three bristle, take the the same kind of highlight orange, maybe shift it a little bit, and just start to contour this orange a little bit more. I didn't have mine contoured quite enough, at which it was creating some weird shapes in it. So I went ahead, went back, and just I'm painting around, getting those same colors in, but just touching it up, creating more detail. using the direction of the brush stroke to change change the the illusion that I've got going. Also going to kind of expand to this side a little bit. 
I'm not painting a straight line. I'm, I'm just touching in the edges. I like that one little stroke there, that little highlight that we just dropped in looks really nice. I like it. I'm going to go back in with my really, really, really dark mixture. Although I got too, a little bit of an edge of orange in that, just wipe it out. Uh, going back in with this super dark color and just going to lay it in in some of the really deep, dark, clothy areas and try to, try to make sure that, that I've got it as dark as I need it to be in those spots. Now for the next few minutes, all I'm going to be doing is going back and forth between the glass and the orange and just every few minutes giving my eyes a refresher and trying to find any pocket of, of change of color that I haven't seen yet that I need to get in. And I, I found a little bit there in the orange. Just oh, I kind of lightened that tone just a little. Just changed it just a tad. And I'm kind of, again, refining the edges as I go, keeping the contours of the orange. Everything now is about refinement and getting detail. I took a little bit of a break for about 15 minutes just to, to, to give my eyes a rest. Sometimes that does help to step away from it. And I, when I came back, I, I saw a lot of problems with the glass. Just little, not, not a lot of problems, but a lot of areas that needed a little, a little touch-up is the best way to say it. So I'm getting some darker colors, some lighter colors in some places. Just trying to use my best judgment on where those changes of pockets of, of, of color and, and even changes of tone really are. I guess everything at this point is really a change of tone, not necessarily a change of color, because we're not going to be adding any any other colors into this. It's just it's just the change of value. Really working on this left side. That left side of this glass looked a little weak, I thought. Got a little too light in some places, got a little too dark in others. We're pretty close to having this thing done though. It's, it looks really great in my opinion. I like, I like the colors and I like the contrast. I've always liked the combinations of orange and navy anyway. So those are two really good combos. And uh, for a guy that hasn't done a still life in a while, I'm pretty happy with this one. I'm, I've got you know some rusty things I need to work out, but overall not bad. If you're enjoying my, my oil painting content, please, please hit that subscribe button as well as the bell icon that notifies you whenever I upload new content. I'm uploading new stuff every, every week, folks, so please be sure and hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Keep painting, and God bless.